Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Just a little bit ago, we got the FIFA Ultimate Team 22 deep dive pitch notes as well as the trailer. And I want to take a look in a quick video today at how these changes are going to affect the game of FIFA 22 and what it could mean for the market. There's a lot of interesting things to talk through here. It also seems very confusing. So I'm going to try to get through it as quick as I can and as concisely as I can. The biggest things today, division rivals, and foot champions. That's where the biggest changes were made. Other than that, the changes were just kind of, I guess, a little underwhelming, to be honest. I, I thought there was going to be more information inside of this article today than there actually was. So let's start off by talking about division rivals, and I'll try to keep this concise and clear. Basically, with division rivals and foot champs, they're trying to make it easier to play, less time constrictive for how it was scheduled in FIFA 21, and offer a little bit more rewards, it sounds like, as well. Honestly, Rivals does not sound like it's changed that much. The thing with Rivals is you now have season and milestone progress. Um, and then there's a new way where you level up through divisions. So I'll talk about that. Rewards really haven't changed too much. And there are no more placement matches. Those are some, some of the key notes with division Rivals. But basically how you progress through a division just looks a little bit different. See, right now we're in rank three. We're progressing towards rank two inside of division three. And you see these things called stages and these little flags called checkpoints. Basically, as you move, as you win, you move up to the next stage or the next checkpoint. As you can see here in the trailer, they won a match. They went from a stage and a checkpoint back up to the next stage. But also, so it's easier to, it's easier to go up, right? It's pretty fast because every time you win a game, you move up to the next stage or the next checkpoint, depending on if you're on a win streak or not. Talk about that in a second. But if you lose... You will be, it'll be harder to drop down because you'll drop back to a checkpoint. And then I think with these three flags here, you'd have to lose or draw. I think three games is what this would be to actually move back to the next stage, to go back from stage four to stage five. There's kind of a checkpoint in the middle. So that is very interesting. That is easier to move up and harder to move back down. Again, winning a match moves you forward one stage, losing a match moves you back one stage unless you were on a checkpoint, which as you can see in here was a checkpoint. So they, def they didn't move all the way back to the last stage where they came from. So this is kind of nice when you are on consecutive matches, uh, like a win streak, you will move up even faster. So you'll see like a little flame. I, I don't really see it here, but uh, in this picture, but you'll basically move all, you'll move up a lot faster. If you win two or three matches in a row, you'll skip some of these checkpoints and just shoop, run up to the next stage is what it sounds like. So that's kind of nice. Starting out, there's no more placement matches. Everybody starts in Division 10, which means there might not be an influx of coins right away to start FIFA like there was last year, like how we had coin um, rewards for moving up a division. That is not how it's going to be this year. It's going to be more spaced out, which is going to impact the market a little bit. You won't have as many coins just thrown on right from the beginning. There's also an elite division for the new top tier. Basically, that's above division one. And once you're in the elite division, you never leave it. You're locked in for the rest of the year and you will only match people inside of the elite division. No division one or division two will get matched up with the elite division. Uh, and there will be a leaderboard with um, skill rating by uh, concurrent to see who is in that top 200. So that's kind of nice. Rewards for division rivals sound like they're, they're staying basically the same. You'll have weekly rewards, but you will also have season and milestone rewards, which kind of sound like um, monthly rewards, if you will. Basically, there will be milestone rewards based off of playing matches and winning matches and then seasonal rewards. You know, how we have like the season objectives, they will pay out some rewards based off of how many games you have played during that season, which is like the six week period. Then on the new season, it'll reset. You'll start back over uh, and get progress more through the next season. So that is, that's kind of just all the information about division rivals in all in all honesty when i read through this it doesn't look like that big of a change for rivals it just looks a bit different in how you progress you can progress faster to get to a higher tier and there's a few more rewards with this season content so the biggest changes in my opinion are with foot champions we saw it a little bit with division rivals how you have the the points based aspect to it but foot champions here is a is a big change right they're taking the competition structure and spreading it out through the week with the introduction of the champions playoffs and finals which basically to me this is kind of rolling back to a uh, dkt which is basically the knockout tournament back in fifa 18 i think it was um, where that's how you qualified for the weekend league very similar structure this year right you still play division rivals to get champions qualification points 
right? Um, you still play division rivals to get the champions qualification points. From there, you will go to the playoffs. And once you get into the playoffs, it's basically like a daily knockout tournament or a weekly knockout tournament, if you will. Well, you will have a certain number of matches to progress and basically get to this rank one, it looks like, because you can see here, it says not qualified for finals and you have this little trophy. And by rank one, there is a little trophy. So basically you have a certain number of matches. We don't know how many it is to rank up to get rank one. And then once you get there, you will earn yourself a finals qualification token. So the, I guess the W part about this is you're basically getting packs as well. You can see that every every reward you pass points to rank three, you get some sort of pack, whether even though it's a jumbo gold pack, if you get a pack for each one of these stages, basically for like one pack per game, that's not terrible, right? So they're at least giving out some rewards with this as well, which we'll see how those pay out and how those how good those actually are. But again, notice here that it's not just plus, you know, like you don't move up per win. It's plus five points for a win and plus one point for a loss. So even if you lose a game, you're technically still progressing a little bit in those champions playoffs. So again, that's how you get into the champions finals, right? You play rivals games, you get into the champions playoffs, play games and try to qualify for the finals. If you get that finals token, you can redeem it for what we know as the weekend league, right? Still the weekend competition with the exact same schedule, um, starting at the same time and ending at the same time, which is going to impact the market when we talk about it here in a little bit. But um, you're going to basically move up through the Champions Finals, aka Weekend League, with a points-based system and not a win-based system. You get five points for a win, again, one point for a loss, and as you move up, looks like you get rewards. The cool thing about rewards, and we're going to talk about this, and this is going to be a big point of conversation, is that rewards are attainable instantly that's the big part about this if you play all of your foot champions games depending on how many there are people saying there's like 20 games in total or whatever it is over the champions final time period when you play all your games let's say you get done with your games on saturday in the middle of the day boom weekend league rewards paid out instantly when you finished all your games now if you don't finish all your games then your rewards will be paid out basically sunday night early monday morning when the actual weekend league time frame closes. So there's no lag time between weekend league rewards and um, the competition ending. That's really, really nice to get those rewards right away. Now, the interesting thing is um, that means that rewards are no longer going to be structured at one singular point, And that is going to basically throw out the entire window of Thursday flipping and Thursday investments, right? Because rewards being on Thursday would make everybody go out and buy their teams for that weekend league. But now you're going to have rewards spread out through the weekend, depending on when people finish their games and on Sunday nights. So Sunday nights, Monday mornings with squad battle rewards, if they keep those at the same time, and a lot of foot champions rewards being paid out because you know not everybody's going to finish their games once we figure out what the gold three equivalent of these champions finals is in FIBA 22. Uh, you know, that's going to be a big time for the market. So that's going to, I think that's the biggest thing today that we learned is that what EA is trying to do is have consistent and constant demand throughout the week for the champions playoffs and the champions finals to kind of keep you, I guess, grinding in a sense, um, in order to, uh, get in. Now, also it says that a change to the champions qualification process is a limited entry system that allows you to decide when and how to compete within the season you will have a limited number of attempts at champions com competition with a single entry good uh, with a single entry good for an attempt in the champions playoffs and a champions final if you qualify. So it sounds like there's a certain number of attempts to get into the playoffs um, to get that final token to actually play the weekend league. Um, so it's not like you just continue to go over and over and over and try and try and try. There's only a certain amount of attempts. So um, the biggest part again about this though is the rewards. Basically, they can claim them instantly. And for me, one thing I'm a little bit curious about and how this is going to work is what's going to happen if people are like cheating, right? I thought that was the big change or that was the reason why rewards were delayed is because um, top 100, they had to look through the replays and make sure that nobody was like cheating, using disconnect um, glitches or anything like that. So I'm curious to see how that's going to be combated with this, you know, instant payout of rewards but we'll have to see also with this rewards is that you will know what cards you're playing for during 
the week, like during the weekend, like right now, the way that it is in, in FIBA 21, you didn't know what team of the week cards you were playing for as your red picks um, until basically, you know, you were playing on Sunday and the team of the week that came out Wednesday, you got in your Thursday rewards. The way that it is now, you will know when you're playing on the weekend, the team of the week that will be in packs will be the one that's paid out through rewards, which is so awesome, right? That needed to be changed. That needed to be the, the way that it is because why would you be playing for something that you don't even know is gonna come out? So that's a big dub with these rewards and that is what that means. So that is very nice. But again, the biggest changes to Weekend League is that it's a points-based system. There's probably less games and there is a daily knockout slash the, um, the uh, champions playoffs way to qualify for the weekend league so it honestly sounds like it might require a few more games to actually get into weekend league because you have to play rivals then you have to play the champions playoffs then you get into the weekend league of the champions finals but um if the rewards are consistently paid out and there's more rewards in here for the champions playoffs which it looks like there is that could be decent and again the weekend league rewards and the champions rewards being paid out at the end of the weekend instantly that's the biggest part of this right that's the huge biggest aspect of this today that is very very interesting um just that those are basically basically instant so that's kind of all the information about rivals and foot champs the biggest updates uh public co-op squads i mean it looks like they're adding some stuff to co-op which is dope i mean there's just not a ton of hype for this right now which hopefully there begins to have be some hype but at least at the moment not a ton Finally, they fixed up the uh, menus so that SBCs are not absolutely hidden. This is how the menus will look in FIBA 22. You'll have news, objectives, transfers, squad building challenges, and then you'll have tabs up here. So right now you're on the home tab. Tab. If you click right over to play, it'll of course take you into all the different sections of draft, friendlies, foot champions, division rivals, and squad battles. Um, but now you can also access your club as well, which was a definite uh, addition that they needed. Also, you can see up here in the top left, this graphic, this looks different, right? It's a lot thinner. It's a lot smaller for your club name, the established date, your coin balance, and your uh, FIFA point balance. Uh, this is going to have to get stretched a little bit wider. 60,000 coins. We're going to have a lot more digits up there, EA. So hopefully your graphics can expand because we're going to need more than five uh, digit spaces. We're going to be definitely in the tens of millions plus coins this year. So we got to get that bigger. Anyways, um, that's kind of the new updates to the menus and how it looks. Again, more of a darker theme. I think after we went to the dark theme for FIFA 21, we really like that. A lot of people like that. So that is very, very nice. There's some new ways you can view items as you like basically click the right stick, viewing uh, some of the in-game um, attributes on the cards, which is which is kind of cool. Basically, their uh, best attributes based on their position. For a striker in Mbappe here, you see attack positioning, finishing, reactions, strength, and acceleration. So that's kind of nice. Um, that might change, of course. Then the rest of this is just kind of about stadium customization, which is pretty cool. There's more stuff in here. Uh, there's a VIP area, which is kind of dope. Um, and there's going to be more TIFOs and banners and, and all sorts of customization stuff, which is nice. This is actually a really big W that not a lot of people are going to talk about. Searching for um, stuff for your stadium by color, which is really, really nice because it's kind of hard to search for some of that stuff right now. So that is a dub. And then they talked about heroes as well, which we already know about heroes. Uh, and honestly, in my opinion, these these pitch notes are really short, man. There's a lot of information in here that I think could have been included that was a little bit left out. I honestly would rate like this deep dive. I'd give it like a six and a half out of 10 because... It just really feels like they went deep in on division rivals and foot champs. Yes, there's some changes, but it's not insane. And other than that, where's our information about preview packs? Where's our information about new icons? Um, I still feel like there's a lot to learn. And of course, on Twitter, they've talked about how there is going to be more information released in September. But for a deep dive, I'm a, I'm a little bit underwhelmed. I'll be completely honest with you. I'm a little bit underwhelmed with how this looks. Um, but... I, I like what they're doing with foot champions. I like the point space structure. If it truly is easier to play throughout the week, I mean, they say that it's easier to play throughout the week, but basically what it sounds like is that you have to play a daily knockout tournament, AKA the champions playoffs to get into the weekend league, which is still going to be on the weekend, but that weekend league period might be less games in total, which could be a W. So we'll see how it is. We'll see how the rewards are. And hopefully get some more news. But again, a little bit underwhelming today, completely honest. I like the changes. I just think the quantity 
was less than I was expecting. But of course, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. The biggest thing is that Thursday flipping is no longer gonna be a thing and rewards being claimable instantly is a tremendous W, right? It just makes it so much easier. And then knowing that those rewards are there, maybe EA is trying to get people to play more games a week in league so that you can, you know, attain them right away. But that's kind of my opinion on the content that dropped. Let me know again down in the comments what you think. Rate it out of 10, maybe. We'll say that down in the comments. But if you enjoyed this video, smash the thumbs up on it, comment down below, and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate the Foot Account, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.